Figuring out time of death from remains can be tough for investigators, but new research is looking at how the protein inside of our bones could give a more definite answer, even decades after death. 31's fragmented and 32 is good. They, these skeletons may have been out in the field for one year, three years, or various time periods. One in 16. At the Southeast Texas Applied Forensic Science Facility, researchers use bodies donated by families to advance forensic science, looking at factors surrounding decomposition and death. But figuring out an accurate time of death on skeletal remains has been a struggle in many cases. Now that's changing. And at the moment, there is no reliable method to be able to determine time since death of, of bones. After a certain point of decomposition, why is it difficult to figure out the time of death? After that time, when all the soft tissues have decomposed and have gone, all we're left with the skeletal remains and the bones there, and they don't decompose in a very predictable pattern. We all know investigators use DNA to help solve that puzzle, but even DNA can be too damaged after a while, which is why researchers like Naomi Procopio have turned to other indicators. She's in the UK, but is working on the research with Cherie Hughes here in the US. We are looking at biomolecules in bones, such as DNA, proteins, lipids, and metabolites. Metabolites. When you put together all these results, you can uh, then try to develop methods to estimate either the chronological age or the postmortem interval by combining multiple omics together. Our role here in Naomi's research is to provide her with the skeletal samples that she needs for her project. This is how it works. Bone samples from a range of skeletons are sent from the body lab to Naomi's lab. After promising results from animal bones, Naomi was able to start research on human bones. So far, I sampled more than 100 different uh, portions of bones. This footage provided to us by Northumbria University, Newcastle in England, shows Naomi and her colleagues taking bone fragments and using technology to separate each biomolecule. The next step in the study will be combining them together to see if they can uh, help like feed information one into the other one to get uh, better estimations. Any kind of like improve, improvement in the way in which we can get an estimation will be a massive achievement. An estimated 4,400 unidentified bodies are recovered each year. Approximately a thousand of those bodies remain unidentified after one year. Having a precise estimation of the age of a person and understanding when exactly that person died can be extremely uh, beneficial for getting information on uh, missing individuals and uh, unidentified remains. It's really exciting because it's an area of the puzzle that we, or a piece of the puzzle that we don't have. The team still have a few years of research ahead, but results look promising. The, the end goal is to solve more cases, be able to identify more missing persons, identify skeletons, be able to you know, provide investigators with information they didn't have so we can solve more cases and bring closure to more families. I'm Chloe Nordquist reporting. That'll do it for our conversation about crime in America. Join us next week. We are talking all about the economy. With high inflation, dollars don't feel like they go as far as they used to. Now minimum wage is at its lowest value since the 50s, what those feeling the struggle say needs to be done. Until then, from Oklahoma City, I'm Chris Stewart, and this is The Race.